So if you can start by telling us who you are in your job title. I'm Christopher Dobbs and I'm Head of Interpretation at the Mary Rose Trust. Okay, last time we were here we were chatting to Nick Butterley about the Barber Surgeon Collection. So can you tell us what we're looking at today? Yeah, this is actually a collection of carpentry tools that we found on the Mary Rose. And what is absolutely fantastic is that many of them were found inside a cabin. So it was almost like a time capsule within a time capsule. And we're sure this cabin belonged to the carpenters because it had all these tools. And so another of the stories that we want to tell in the museum, as well as the one about the barber surgeon, is about the carpenter, the master carpenter. And he was actually a very important person on board the ship, like a chief engineer of a modern warship, or even more important than that. Because if there were any problems with the ship, you had to call for the carpenter or the shipwright. And it's just wonderful that we've got this collection of objects related to carpentry and shipwrightry. And some of them were actually in chests and some with his personal possessions. So uh, as we can with the barber surgeon, we can look at the personal possessions of the carpenter and really get to know him. And in fact, one of the chests we had, which is uh, just out of shot here, actually had some very, very um, fussy things in it that uh, shows this person was very keen on his appearance, you know, very much not like me. He had a comb, he had a, a, a razor, he had a, a mirror, he had a whetstone, he had a whetstone to, to, um, to sharpen the razor, but he also had... Um, some uh, a manicure set so he could actually clean his fingernails or clear the wax out of his ears. So he was obviously quite a you know well kept person. But we also had some of his tools inside this case: a tool holder with a ruler, uh, a hammer, and items like that. And then in the cabin we have all these other objects like rulers, planes, corking mallets, adzers. So the complete collection of Tudor shipwrights instruments. Which is the lovely thing about the Mary Rose collection, that it does tell us those personal stories. Yes, and there are lots of stories about the different objects, and these are some of the things that we want to be able to tell in the new museum, you know, how they did the corking and things like that, the different types of whetstone that they had for sharpening the chisels. There are all these stories locked up in the collection that we want to tell in the new museum. OK, and how do you start planning a display like this? Where, where does that initial concept come from? Well, it needs to start with the objects we've got, which is an incredibly rich collection of objects. But then one of the visions that we have of the new museum is that we should tell the stories that come out of the objects. Uh, some of them were marked. We've, marked. we've got objects here that are marked, perhaps with the maker's name, perhaps with the owner's name. It's hard to tell. We haven't got all the answers yet. But So it starts with the objects and the stories they can tell, because we feel that it's stories that can really interest the public. Not just knowing that this was a ruler found on the Mary Rose, you know, you can see that, but seeing how that was found together with other things, perhaps in a personal chest or whatever. Uh, so we've got the objects, then the stories, and then we have to see how those stories relate to other parts of the collection. But then, as well as that, it's very important to actually get the design looking good. And we're really fortunate to have a great team here with Rose sorting out the designs of the showcase and then Dennis and the rest of the team doing all the mounts. And so it's this combination of all these factors, of the objects themselves, the stories we, we need to tell in each individual case, the, how that contributes to the overall stories, then the design, and later on we'll come to the lighting. Uh, and that, again, is really important to make sure that the objects really shine without taking away any, um, any, anything from the objects. You don't want the lighting to, to run the show, but it needs to be subtle enough. So there's all these things, and even the colour of the backgrounds, we're just experimenting at the moment, and of course the texts that go with these, and that comes, all comes into the process. So this stage in putting the new museum together is vitally important, really. Absolutely. I mean, although we're... Uh, not quite two years off uh, having the museum ready because we've got so many cases to do. We want to make sure we get these stories right and now's the time to do that. Okay, fantastic. And personally, you've been involved with every stage of the project from the initial dives. Can you tell us about some of your highlights and maybe what you're looking forward to with the new museum? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, when we were diving on the wreck, it was just amazing because every dive you had, you might find something different. I mean, I'm very lucky that the carpenter's cabin was actually in the section of the ship that I was in charge of excavating. So that and many other objects, particularly chests, you know, I was very, very much involved with. But now I think the challenge and the exciting thing is making all those stories and all these objects available to the public in a new and exciting way 
but also in a museum where we've got the ship as the background. Up to now, the ship and the objects have been displayed hundreds of yards apart, and we're going to put them all back together so people get much more of an idea of where the objects came from in the ship and really tell all the stories together. Okay, great. Thank you for your time.